All right, gang, today we're gonna to jump into the ideas section. So the project ideas inside of Clipflow. And basically the concept around this is that you will get a bunch of ideas as you're you know, thinking of things you could create content on. And you're gonna just chuck them into a pile and then we're gonna add the ability for you and your team to upvote those. So you can or we'll rearrange them. So as things come in, you can say, oh, this is a really good one. Let's pull that. And from there, you will create a project. So let's jump into it. All right, we've got a very cool design here, quite simple, but you can see here, so we've got our ideas title. This is the channel switcher. We're gonna create, create idea button here. And then you can see here, there's a whole bunch of ideas here that you can just drag and rearrange. So that'll be a nice challenge for us. Uh, and it just says who did it, how long ago? Cause I think, you know, ideas that are old, you may or may not want to do them. And then here's the kind of the voting system. So that's kind of a coming later feature, but eventually be able to have your team vote on these things and then you can see like oh a whole bunch of our team think this is a cool idea or you could even float this as a public screen so we will eventually create a, a sh like a public url that you can post and then you could have your you your viewers vote on what you should film next so let's keep moving so the first thing we want to do is jump into our terminal and we are going to create the model so let's just double check quickly before i even go anywhere let's just see a quick review of what we have it looks like we already have this idea model so we don't even have to do that right now so luckily we had a quick look um, we did set this all up in the beginning and I completely forgot so we have a title and a description and a channel ID but what we can see here is we also need we have a look here we also need the creator so we probably need the user ID there the tag we don't have a concept of yet these are attachments and, and kind of comments which we also don't have right now what we should also do is eventually we'll I mean we can do this later but we will have an idea vote so it could be either a positive or a negative so it's an up or down and then we'll have that but we that's getting into the weeds so we can do that later so the next piece is let's just add the user so we're going to make some changes so we're going to go in here we're going to say rails g migration and we're going to say add user to ideas all right run that jump into migration so we're going to go into db migrate down the bottom here and we're going to say add column and to uh, ideas and we're going to say user so it's actually add reference right ideas user all right that's I think that's all we need uh, that's the thing and that's the column uh, and that's going to figure that out there so let's just run this now we'll go into rails db migrate see what happens there we go so it's added the users there now if we go into our db we can have a look refresh this we've got now user id it's a big int and it's indexed all right so when using the referenced um, add reference here rails going to index that for us as well all right moving on next step we are going to scaffold the controller so we're going to go rails g scaffold controller and this is going to be for an idea again i'm just going to double check myself and haven't done this before nope great so we go back here hit that done all right so now if we have a quick look we need to just check our routes file so if we go into config we go into routes now we will have these living so we can see them currently we've got the channels up here so i'm going to grab these two routes bring them down so i'll just put channels here right so that's where you can get a list of all your channels i think what we'll do is here and then the resources for ideas so we like to just keep these here i think it's I believe it's called shallow nesting but what we want to do is for all the post create destroy update we'll have a route called ideas slash and then inside of we'll have the nested version as well and this is really just for index all right so in here so we added this last time but here we're going to say we're going to have resources ideas and really only index yeah we really only want to see index for that one for now now if we have a look we should be able to go rails routes and up here we can now see we've got the channel slug and then we've got ideas so it'll be like fit for production channel name and then ideas all right epic so let's go now and just run dot bin dev get the service started up and have a look 
at our controller, okay? So now inside of our controller, we've got, it's gonna be similar to our projects controller where we added this where channel slug, all right? So we're gonna add that in, the same, the same thing. So we're gonna go into models, go into idea, we're gonna go into project, and we're gonna just grab the scope right here, right? And then let's just double check. I'm pretty sure our idea belongs to a channel. That's great. So inside of our model here, we can see it there, belongs to channel. And then we're gonna have our scope. So under here, we're gonna have scope and we're gonna say where channel slug, and then just literally it's exactly the same thing as the project. And it feels like this might even be able to be extracted later on as we go, but we will see. So now what we can do is here, we can just say idea where channel slug, all right? So now we're gonna say, get all the ideas where the channel slug is equal to something here, all right? So now we should be able to go inside of this guy here and we're gonna just go ideas and there we go. So now we've got our cool, awesome list of ideas, right? And now we've got one idea at the moment in the DB and let's have a look at what that is, new expo version. So we've got a great idea talking about an expo version. And let's also just add, just for sanity checking ourselves, we're gonna go in here and we're gonna go rail C. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna create a new idea and we're going to say channel ID is two. So I believe if we jump into the DB, we can have a look at channels. We've got a second channel, the prime time, channel two, and an idea needs a title. So this will be, what can we call this? The latest on Twitter slash X. All right, let's hit idea create. All right, so now what we wanna do is we wanna test this. So when we see fit for production, there's one idea, right? Now if we change our slug to the prime time, just here, chuck that in there. Uh, it doesn't really help because now we can see idea two. Maybe what we can do is inside of our view quickly, we go idea, hit ID here, it's in the index route. Let's just chuck a, a little guy here and what we're gonna render out is just the idea dot um, title. All right, so let's just chuck that in there just so we can actually see what's going on. There we go, so you can just see the latest on Twitter, right? Let's bump this up for you guys as well. There we go, the latest on Twitter. And then if we go back, we refresh, new expert version. Cool, so we're doing our filtering. So that's just a double check. All right, so the next piece is let's get this guy looking good so that we can actually have our title up here. So if we jump into our projects Kanban view, we'll kind of get what we need to do. So what we need here is let's just grab all of this and then let's just chuck this straight in here like this I might just chart I'm just hesitating because I'm just trying to see how we can fit this all in so we've got the main content here and here we're going to say ideas so we're using our stream mode visibility so when we toggle that we're going to either show the title or we're going to show nothing we don't need this one because we don't need to show that when we're streaming now let's jump back in here I'm just going to move this off to the side here and then bring that in a bit. So now we can see we've got our ideas showing and if we hit stream mode, that disappears, right? Because we want to save that vertical space when we're streaming. So we do need to create a notice component, right? So that's when we do something, we can show a little like a toast. Uh, we don't need this anymore. This is going to render the ideas, but this will live inside of, let's move this inside of our main content. So it lives there now. Okay, so we got that there. And now that should sit, so there we go, you can see it's now formatting the right color as well. And we just need to fix and create a notice component, all right? Let's set up this notice component quickly and we'll just show you how to do that again. All right, so to create a new component, we need this. So we're gonna run Rails G component and then our component name is going to be notice box for now. Um, and then we're gonna sidecar, so that creates the folder that we can put in our HTML. And I don't think we need stimulus in this one right now. So we don't need any JS, all right? So we're just gonna run that, okay? So now we've got our side cuts, yeah. We've got our notice box component, all right? And this one here, we are going to add our template here. I didn't want, uh, that's because I've set the config to always generate, generate stimulus, all right? So we can just delete this for now because we don't need it. 
All right, so let's go back into here. And so and what would technically happen in here would be something like uh, idea was created successfully, right? So the idea was created successfully, right? So let's just pop that in to our index here. So we're going to render. And we could even render, let's be honest, this could probably just live always in the main content component. So we don't have to keep remembering to add it. So let's just do this. So we're going to grab this one and we're going to shove it right above the content. All right. And this will be our notice box component dot new. And I think we can pick this up. So if we just go here, okay, got to start the server. So just run bin dev, right, jump back in. There we go. So that's what our notice box looks like. All right. So what do we want this to do? So we need to make sure, let's just, if we look at how this is currently rendering, it just renders the notice. Okay. So we're going to grab that. We can use that, we can do that later. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab that and show it. So what we're gonna do first inside of this notice box component is let's go class and we wanna say border um, rounded large. And then what, are, what else do we wanna do here? We wanna have a color. So depending on the color or the if it's an error or if it's a notice, we wanna render something different. But let's just see what this looks like. So we got that, we want padding now, we want P, I don't know, four, something like that. Um, I'm gonna just reset this just so I can get a better idea what that looks like. Um, idea was created successfully. And then we want the border color to be a specific color. So let's go with dark, cause we're in dark mode here. So dark, we want border color to be I mean, we should probably even define a border color in Tailwind. So let's do that as well. Um, let's go. Assets, style sheets, Tailwind. So here you can see here, let's go um, color border. Border, and then we're going to define this, right? For both of these guys. So let's have a look at what could go well here. Probably the same color, or a little bit darker than what we're using on the side here. Um, or maybe even let me just check the designs. All right, so jumping into the designs, 48, 48, 48, right? So that's what we're looking at here for dark mode. All right, so we're gonna go now, we're gonna have this border color. So, we have to def so we've done that in the style sheet, but now we have to jump into tailwind.config here and actually spit it out. So we're gonna say border, right? And then we're just gonna copy one of these lines. There we go, color border, just make sure it works, yep. All right, chuck that in. Now, I think we have to reboot. So let's just reboot just in case. All right, and now we should be able to say border color is border. Now we don't actually need a dark mode anymore. Let's see if that works. Let's just make sure that that's how you define a border color. Go here, border color, border, black so you don't set color you don't say color you just say this is where i always find a little bit weird with the naming convention because we we want to say the color is called border but then when we go border border it looks a bit silly doesn't it um oh you can barely see that so let's just zoom in for everyone you cannot actually see that on this color so i think we might have to just make change that update that all right so the design doesn't have a toast component yet, but what I want to do just for now, just to keep moving, is I've just set it as the same background, like a darker thing, so you can actually see the, if we zoom in a bit, it's got a tiny, I mean, you're probably losing it in video quality, but you can tiny, very subtle line there. And that's saying idea was created successfully. So that's all we're going to do for now. And that's, that's good enough. And then what we want to do here is just chuck a um, margin bottom here of like eight just so that it can give some breathing room probably when it comes in. I, th I do think we'll probably have to um, render this in or animate it or do something nice with it because it's going to be very average.
And now what we want to do is just only show this when we have a notice. Okay, so to do that, we're just going to wrap this thing in an if statement here. If notice present or if alert is present, we will render. And then inside of that, we're just going to render the notice or the alert. Okay, so we're just going to chuck that straight in there. All right, now we can leave that there. What's this saying? Undefined variable notice, that's fine. We can pick that up. So let's just pass that in to our component. So here we're gonna have the initializer. And this is gonna be notice or alert, right? So we're gonna do that. So we're just setting the instance variables when we initialize. And then inside of this, we can change these like that. And then inside of our main content, we're just gonna pass these in. So if we have one of these things, they'll get passed in. All right. And this is also a component, so we need to pass that into through the main component as well. Because we only have access to those variables inside of the actual um, index files or the, the main view, sorry. So what we'll do is we'll just copy those same concepts and we'll use it for the main component. And then from here, we can pass those through here. Where are you in here? Let's see. Undefined variable notice. Okay. It's these. There we go, all right? So now when we have created something, it will show up here, otherwise it'll hide, perfect. So the next thing that I wanna do is actually create a new component called a button. So we don't have that yet. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna create a little button component. So we're gonna run our stimulus thing. So we're gonna, do we need stimulus in a button? Probably not right now, but we're gonna just call this button, all right? Um, so we've got our button component now and then with the button we want to have a few different things so we're going to initialize here like this and what we're going to have is we're going to have I think we're going to have a size and a variant so we'll have size variant so we could have like large medium small or we could have outline primary, secondary, etc. And then what else can we put in there? We can put in the icon if we want, and we could put in the text. All right, so that's, I think that's what we want for now. So let's add those things in. Icon, size, variant, and text. And I think we can actually leave text because what we'll use is we'll just use that with content, right? So let's have a look at what that looks like. So we've got a button component now and we get render that. So inside of the heading component, we've got our text, but what we want to do, so that's just the straight heading. So inside, let's just have a look in main content. I'm just trying to see how we can basically render this top section because we want to have the button on the right hand side here. So what I'm going to do, I think next is actually create a page header component because, so the heading is just the H1, but I want a heading, which is basically sets the layout for our entire heading. All right, so let's create a new component um, in here. So we'll go Rails G component, and this will be page header. All right, page header component, run that. So what does the page header component do? So the page header component is gonna get in content, but what it's gonna mainly do is define how these things sit together, right? So we're gonna run this. It's gonna be class flex, and we're gonna have justify between, because we wanna split the space between the left and the right, okay? And then in here, we're just gonna render out content. 
And that should hopefully be it. So what we're going to do inside of here is we're going to say page header component dot new, right? And then we're going to go do, nudge that in, and then we're going to just end this guy. All right, let's see. Yep. Got to run bin dev. All right, here's our ideas. Okay, so that's still rendering perfectly fine. But now what we, when we go here and render out a button, right, we want to render a button component and we want to have size, I'm going to go large uh, and variant primary, right? Um, that's all. Let me just got to close this off. Are we going to do here? Because it does need a do block. See, so what I was saying is we could, you could do a do block like this, but then you're going to have the button title here, button, which I don't know if that doesn't feel that good. So let's pull that back and do this. And then we're going to just say text here, um, create uh, idea or new idea. Yeah, let's run that missing keyword icon. Okay, so what I found here is also we've got it's just we can say size of these are the defaults. So we're going to say large variant is always going to be primary. And then icon is nil. Don't need an icon. Okay. Let's see what that does. Unknown keyword text. That's fair enough. And this is button. I might just actually just call this action. Oh, actually, we might leave it nil because you might have buttons that are icon only, okay? So let's just add text here. All right. Now, I can just also just remove size and variant like that. Now, let's refresh here. There we go. Here's our button template. Awesome. Looks amazing. We also want to um, item center here so that these things center. There we go cross from each other. So I might even make that smaller just to double check. Right. Doesn't look quite center, but we'll figure that out. Um, all right, so the content in there, it could be because one of these guys has some sort of padding or margin on it. That's, this has got something on it. But anyway, that's fine for now. So. Now, what does a button look like? Firstly, a button component should be a button. So let's turn that into a button. Okay, so that's our button there. Now, we're gonna go class equals, and this will be BG primary. Now this is gonna depend on what variant we've selected, right? So the size is going to depend on that. So we will need to keep that in mind. But for now, I'm just going to say, I'm just going to do this. Okay, that doesn't, let's see, what does that look like at 100%? Don't need font bold, maybe medium. We can probably run there. And then here, this will just this will be the text. Uh, text. It is should be text. Sorry, you got to use these guys. Text. New idea. There we go. So that's looking cool. Um, and then with the icon. Um, Let's have a look at how we've just done our icons inside of our sidebar. Uh, where are you? Shared navigation. This is what an icon looks like. So chuck that into the button component. There's our little icon. And then what we're going to say here, let's run this button as an inline flex. And we're going to go gap one. Doesn't quite work. Let's go. Yep. 
So it does work. We just need to also then just go item center, justify center as well. There we go. All right, we've got a little button. So now also realistically, I think what we can do here is we can pass this through as a string, all right? So we're gonna now pass this through as icon. And then here what we're gonna say is we're gonna say, if icon, then we're gonna render it. Otherwise we're not, okay? So now that should disappear. Now what we can say inside of our um, page header, where are we using this guy here? We're gonna say icon is going to be FA plus. Okay, that's not the heading, that's the wrong place. It's in here. There we go. That's it. So now we're using components, right? So we can do whatever we want here, minus. And it does what we need it to do. Perfect. Um, the only other things that we need to work on is the variance. Uh, so we can do that in a minute. So I think that looks pretty good for the sizing though. That's probably our large size. What we can do as well is if we have something like, um, well, I mean, we'll probably have to lay out our variance as if statements in here, I, I think, um, from the way Tailwind works. Because I don't think you can use the, the CSS variables for things other than color. Um, all right, anyway, so let's go on to rounded large as well. We want that. Yep, that will match the rest of us. So, yeah, I think that's pretty good for now. Let me have a think. So let's just try to create the other variants. We're going to have, let's just put border on this always. So that's there. Okay, so we now need to have the border needs to be primary to match. Yep. And then what we want to do is when we, I think border two, like that, and then when we have the variant set to, let's just go here. You know what we can do? We can use data attributes actually. That should be able to do what we need. We can say data variant equals that, right? So now what we can do is we'll get, if we look inside here, we can see the variant um, is primary. Now, only when data is variant is primary, do we want the background to be set. Otherwise, we want the outline version, right? So we're gonna say here data, and then it's inside here, it's gonna be variant equals primary. We want BG primary. Okay, so now if we change this to secondary, there we go, all right? So when we change it to a secondary button, it's now losing the, um, the color there. So, but what we could do is depending on how we wanna do this, we could say, if it's secondary, then we want the secondary color, right? So we could say secondary and then BG secondary. Let's see what that looks like. I don't know if we have a secondary color. Let's just double check. No, we don't have a secondary secondary color. Um, but let's, for instance, what would be something, I mean, we could figure that out. But what we could do here is, let's say instead of the secondary one, let's run with, I'm gonna change this. I'm gonna say for this, this border here. So if we're gonna go data variant equals um, outline, then we want border primary, all right? So at the moment, it's gonna just be white. Um, otherwise, what we want is it to match. So we're gonna say data, no, no, we're gonna say border 
is going to match. So on a normal button, on a primary button, it needs to match primary. Sorry, I'm just creating st uh, styles on the fly. But now we can change this back to primary. And then if we change this to outline, like that, okay? So those are the two variants we have. And then for size, um, we can also have here data size. I might even prefix these, just I'm just not sure how Tailwind will handle. So we might just do this, button variant. So let's just select both of those and change it to button variant. Okay. And then here we're gonna say size, yeah? So now that should be passed through. So we've currently got variant outline, size large, all right? And then with the sizing, the way we're gonna do sizing, we'll just change the padding and the font size. So if the size is large, so we're gonna say data size equals large, then we have padding four. So this is, it's adding PY and PX differently. Let's just double check that. And this should be P4. All right, so that's for large. But then for anything else, we can just say padding is two. And then we can work our way through sizes as we want. We can like basically give different um, styles. So that's just a, that's now, what do we have? We got size large. Size large padding four. Let's just double check that size is in fact being passed through. Size. Then let's have a look at this button here. Just make sure it's all good. So button. And what padding have we got in, got in here? We got P2. So button size large. Size large should be P4. And if we change this variant to primary again, let's just make sure that works. Okay. I'm just concerned with this one. Data. Ah, that's why I can, because it's called button size. People are probably shouting at their screens. There we go. So it really is PX4, I think. And then it's just annoying we have to repeat ourselves here, but PY is two. Otherwise we're gonna be PX2, PY1. So that's large. And then for medium, it shrinks. Okay, and then we can have a small one where we just drop the font down even further, all right? But that's how we can create variants um, using I guess using uh, view components. So it's quite cool. Um, the next piece, I think what we can do now is we can move on uh, to actually listing these ideas. All right, so now that we've got our, our page set up now, we can see that we've got our ideas here and we're looping through them and we're rendering the idea. So the idea is this guy here and currently absolutely nothing, right? So I'm just gonna put here, uh, render out the idea.title. Okay, and then let's just go into our index and we can actually remove this part. Now we're just rendering ideas. There we go. All right, so that's what we got so far. Nothing amazing, but what we want to do is we want to render this guy. Okay, so this thing is, we're going to have like a container here where we can actually drag and drop um, eventually. But what I'm gonna do now is just, I'm just gonna lay out this so that we can get a good look and feel. We'll add the functionality for drag and dropping in another video. But for now, let's just try and actually render this thing out, all right? So let's start with that. So from what I can see, we've got a container. It's got a little icon here, it's got text here, and then it's got like its actions over here. So it's like a, almost like a three column kind of layout here. I mean, even two column probably. We could probably run as a two column. So let's go into our idea now. 
So in here, right? So now first things first, let's just fix this up here. It's a div. It's actually, we can use the article tag here because it's an item. Not that it matters too much because we don't, this is not public right now. Um, we're going to have on this side, we're going to have something, which is the title. And then on the other side, we're going to have our actions. So I just like to lay things out like this to begin. Uh, and then this is the title. And then here we need to have a class, right? We need this idea here so that we can actually, if we want to manipulate this, like remove it or anything with JavaScript, um, stimulus and turbo, we can. So here we're going to say it's a flex. Um, it's not flex col. It's got a border. No, it does have a border. And the color is border, like our old friend. And border... So it's rounded large. We're using large for everything in here. P4, we don't need to use this because we can control that with the container. So let's have a look at what that's doing. Can't see the border. We need to add a background color. So BG, so that'll be the same as in our toast we just recently did. So that'll be a component and that's our, uh, where are you? Notice box. So it's basically the same as this. If we chuck that in. There we go. So we've got an item. So that's looking cool. I definitely think we need to update that border color because it is a bit too light for my liking. Let's just do that quickly because I can't actually see it. Um, it's in dark mode. So if we just make this brightness maybe 52. Don't know if it's going to pick that up. We probably have to restart. Let's try that all the way to 255. I just want to see if it's actually picking it up. Here we go. No, so it's not actually picking that up. Color border. So we just have to, we do have to look into that. Something's not right there. It's probably this keyword's probably not ideal. Anyway, let's keep moving. So we got the title and then we've got actions. So we need to justify between. To shove that to the side, there we go. And then we've got a little, so that's an icon or a column there. Then we've got a div here. And this is going to be flex, flex, col. Right? And we're going to have an idea. So let's just chuck that in a span. And then underneath here, we're going to have another span, and this is description. Okay, so we need those two there so that we can put them on top of each other. So we don't have a description in here yet. So let's add, update that one. So we're going to go here, rail C. So we're going to go idea dot up, uh, first dot update, and we're going to say description. And let's just grab one of these. Ah, what? Um, there we go. Let's see what that did. There we go. Perfect. So now this is text secondary. So we're going to go here. Class equals, um, is it font? Let me just check text white. I think that my tailwind skills are getting better by now. They're not. There we go, so it's text. So here we can just say secondary. And just double check that again, it's called text secondary. There we go, perfect, all right? So that's now using that from there. And I can show you why we're using these like named colors like this instead of like literally writing. And it's because we can then toggle so we can define those two colors and we can then toggle between our white, a dark mode and a light mode. So if we swap this to light, so we need to fix this background, right? Because you can see it's set that. We just need to be able to set this background here to not be, I'm hard coding it at the moment, which isn't good. See there? So this would need to be like a, it's almost like a tile background, right? So whenever we use a tile, so let's set that up. So it's going to be color tile background and for now this would in light mode it's going to be 
white. And then in dark mode, it will be this, 2222. Two, two, two. So we need to find out what that is in um, RGB. So we're going to go uh, RGB to hex. So the hex is this, so it's 34, 34, 34. So it's tile background or card. Card or tile would be interchangeable there, I think. So we're going to say BG is tile background. Let's see if that works. See, now we've got white, right? So that's our light mode. And now if we flip this back to dark, it hasn't done it. Great. Uh, that is also why, because I haven't done it here. Tile background. Now we're going to copy this, chuck that there. There we go. All right. That's working. So that's how we can establish, and let's just double check for sanity. Chuck that to light mode again. That changes back. Boom, all right? So that's why we use those name colors rather than actually hard coding because you can see when you hard code it, you have to build the versions every time for dark and for light. Whereas this way, we just give it a name like primary and then it'll flip it when we swap it over, all right? So we got our title there and our description and then we just want to add, for now, we'll do the user and how long ago it was. We also need to add this little guy in as well. So where are we going to put him? He's going to go here. So this is going to be an icon, right? And I think you can self-close these guys. And we want to do, where are you? Still getting used to the fun awesome inside of this. Shared navigation. There we go. And then we just check what icon that actually is. It's grip vertical. So we'll just change that, grip, vertical. Right, let's have a look. What have you done? Oh, it's because it's not, it can't do self-closing. All right, so we've got to do that. Perfect. There, and we probably want to do this as also um, text, text, secondary. All right, so this one is flex. And so why do we have a little gap there? It's this line height on this guy. So we want to set, um, let's set a gap here of two, just to give us a little bit of space. And then here we can say, let's go item center and just see what happens. Yes, yeah, so we can push that to the middle there. All right, I think that looks all right. And here we can have gap one. I'm just wondering why we're getting, maybe we get rid of the gap. Get rid of that. All right. And then we can go across here, maybe even gap four, to be honest. There we go. Give it a bit more breathing room. That's at 100%. That's at 150. And then we've got our actions on this side, right? So here we got again, we got class flex, item center, running that to see what we have in here. So we're gonna have multi-column again. So these are gonna run flex and then you're gonna have flex coal going that way. So that's cool. So the same, same concept as this. Um, and then here we're gonna just have username and this is going to be 31 minutes ago. Right, so we need to right align those. And we can also chuck the font size on this down. So we can go text small. Yeah, and we're going to um, justify end. Is it items end? Yeah, items end. All right. Uh, and then the same thing. I think we can add text secondary to all of the items in here and we can remove this class here. Yeah. Okay, cool. That's looking good. Um, all right. So now what we want to do is actually add the username here. So we will always have a username. Dot user dot. I think it's name. Let's just check what the username is. So we're going to say user. And we're going to just be safe because at the moment there is none. 
or we're going to say unknown user. Okay, so we need to add this relation here. So it belongs to a user. Remember, we just added that. We have to just chuck that in there. Unknown user. And then we're going to need the time. All right, so with Rails again, if you remember, we have this really cool helper, time ago in words. And then we can just say idea.created at seven days. All right, so that one was created seven days ago. So the seven days ago, awesome. All right, so that's looking cool. Um, we can get rid of this now as well. So let's jump back into our index. Don't need this. We don't need this. Now we've got our div ideas. There we go. And now what we want to do here is we want to go class equals empty eight. All right, I'm just going to set that back. I think that looks roughly, let's see, do we have roughly the same? Yeah, probably 48. So if we have a look at MT8, what is MT8 equal in Tailwind land? Margin, MT8 is 32. So we could probably use like an MT10, possibly. And that's, that's it there. So we've got our ideas and we've got a new idea here. Let me just bump that up again. All right, so let's just create a couple of ideas um, in here. So we're gonna go idea.create and now we can just say title. So let's go here, we're gonna go title and this one, new iPhone camera. There. So we're gonna chuck that and we're gonna go description. So we chuck that there. User is user.first. And we also need the channel. So channel is channel.first. What have we done wrong? Okay, we just need to reload because we changed the model. There we go, boom. All right, now let's go here. There we go, okay, cool. First little issue, we've got a little, we need a little gap there. So we're gonna go here, we're gonna say this is flex, flex, coal, gap, I oh, know, gap four. Let's see what that looks like, probably a bit much there. So let's make that two. There we go. Awesome. Let's keep creating a couple more. All right, so I've just gone and added a few more ideas. Now you can see here the page is looking pretty cool at 100%. That's what it looks like. And at 150, we're there. We've got a bit of an issue here um, with this text here, but that's all right. We can fix that um, by just making it, if we just drop, say, white space preserve. So if we just go here and go white space. So that's inside of our idea and that's inside of, I mean, technically anything here. All right, so that's now all preserved. All right, and now the only other thing, so we're gonna add the sort, so we'll do that later actually, so that's all good. So these are all just random now at the moment, which is cool. But now also what we can do is just a quick little check and say if we go back to our um, channels and use the prime time just here, you can see now we only have one, right? So in our different channels, we're now filtering and all good. So I think that's it for today. So what have we done? Let's go through it. So today what we did is we added, created a new button component, which is really cool. We've set up these components here for the ideas. We updated or we added a little header, another component for our headers, a page header here. We've got that now. So all in all, pretty useful. What we need to still do is create this little bit underneath, which is this channel selector and these little options. And then we'll also need to add in drag and drop so that we can drag and drop these guys up and down, depending on where you want them. And also be able to create the new idea. All right, so we'll catch you on the next one.